my first ever interview with my good friend Anne. Hey. Say hey, y'all. <laughs> Anne actually has her own channel called Priority Focus Life. Do you want to tell them about your channel? Yeah, so I've got us single mom travel adventures. Right now, the focus is Merida, Mexico, but it's just showing how Alex and I, my son and I, travel through, Me well, not really travel, how we enjoy Merida, Mexico while we're here. Probably gonna be here another year, so it's gonna be Merida for a little while. That's awesome. I don't know if we'll be here that long, we'll see. There you go. <laughs> so I have just a couple of generic questions for mm -hmm. Anne. Um, basically just wanted to get her spiel on what it was like moving to Merida and sort of what motivated her to come here and what she might consider helpful for other single parents who are looking to make the move. Thinking about Merida? Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. So here we go. First question, what drove you to live internationally as a single mom? Um, so I have always traveled. My dad was in the Marine Corps and so all my life I've traveled um, and I actually joined the Navy because I wanted to continue traveling. So as soon as I retired, single mom or not, I knew I was going to continue traveling everywhere. So yeah, nothing, that, that's been my whole life is wanting to travel and move and see new things. That's awesome. So was Mexico your first choice? My first choice was to RV through the U.S. Um, but then five months in, really like four months in, I, I knew it, but it was confirmed that Alex needed braces and also that I needed braces. And U.S. prices are crazy, so I did not want to pay U.S. prices. So I started to look, okay, where can I go? And of course, Mexico is easy because it's very close. And they've got, you know, great referrals because I follow Amoya Shante, right, from the Single Moms Do Inner Circle. And she, her daughter, I think, got braces here. So I saw her video and I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's go get these braces done. Uh, yeah, no regrets for the braces. So okay. part of why we're staying for at least another year is because I've got braces and I want to keep the same doctor. Okay, so basically you're in Mexico for dental tourism, yep. Yep. which is something that a lot of expats do. They come here because the prices are slashed. Much compared. more reasonable. Medical yes. prices in general are a lot mm -hmm. more affordable. And Merida has a single mom community, so I knew it would meet that need that Alex had, especially of having community. Now that I'm here though, I realize I need it too. Yeah. <laughs> but I initially came braces and then Alex needing community. That was part of, really part of why Avery and I chose this area in particular. I heard so much about the expat community yeah. as well as the single mother community. So to sort of caveat what you said about community, did your friends and family back home agree with your decision to, to move, so to travel? Because I've always traveled, um, they knew that that is not even a question. Inevitable. They knew I was going to do it. Right. Um, they did make some statements about Mexico in particular that were not, you know, why would I not go to France or why would I not go to Japan or kind of the other places they considered normal vacation spots. Safer. Safer. Yeah. Um, so of course I had to introduce them to the fact that Merida is one of the safest places in the world and second safest, depending on where your resources are, but um, in North America. so. Merida's pretty safe and Mexico is not the I don't know we're not at every corner being kidnapped we're not at every corner seeing drugs we're not like it's not as prevalent as maybe the movies and the media kind of portray so um, but yeah in terms of I think they were concerned that I was coming to Mexico but there was no telling me that I'm not gonna do it because I am a traveler it's what I do and I've traveled you know my family again we're a traveling family but they stopped sort of kind of with the military so a lot of them have military background but they don't necessarily just travel so whereas I have like I just go where I want to go so that's awesome yeah. what can they do did you get people arguing with you arguing no not really um I am pretty decisive when I'm decisive Same. so yeah. I, I think my family and friends know that about me well enough to know that oh she's she's she gone. said it she's <laughs> happening yeah. Yeah. yeah I think what there was was some level of doubt like um you know is she just saying this is it just like something a flight she's, of fancy like a concept that you yeah. weren't gonna follow like on? she wants to go to Mexico we can see that but is she going mm -hmm. like is she really gonna 
sell all of her stuff. And right, right. <laughs> and then as you sell the things, they're like, she might be serious. They were like, wow, you're selling your stuff? <laughs> yeah. So we, we experienced that whole yeah. thing. But nobody was like, don't go. It's, right. You can't go. You'll keep. I think our family members know us enough to be like, she said it, it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. My next question was going to be, was fear a major factor that impacted your choice of travel? But obviously yeah, not. Yeah, no. out here on these streets. Y'all see that? Um, would, do you have anything to say about anyone who may be um, delaying their decision to travel internationally as a single parent, um, dealing with that fear? I mean, I think I would definitely ask people to think about why you want to travel because there's lots of reasons why a person might want to travel. Right. I would worry if your number one reason for traveling is finances, um, because of course Merida and Mexico in general has a lower cost of living. A lot of people that's attractive, certainly attractive to me again with the, the prices of braces and everything being lower, highly attractive. But I would caution if that's the only reason why you want to travel because traveling really isn't for everyone, right? It's for a certain kind of person. Um, there are multiple ways to earn income and to increase your finances, to change your finances. If you're coming just for money, I think you might be disappointed, right? If you're coming just for the budget, because probably you'll want to recreate your American lifestyle in another place. And that's not necessarily going to be easy or even doable, depending on, I guess, what your standards are. So, um, yeah, know your reason, know your why. And if your why is strong enough, do it. Just do it. See? And the beauty of like Mexico in particular is you can just go back any minute, right? I can literally just go on, get on a plane and go back home if I want to. All right. Where's the last place you lived and what do you miss most about it? Mm. So aside from RV, the last place we were stationary is Jacksonville, Florida. Alex still misses his friends from there. Um, for myself, I've been, I travel, so I don't necessarily miss Jacksonville as much. I always miss the people. I think every location is only awesome if the people are awesome, but I'm always looking for the next place to go, the next place to visit. So yeah, people is the number one thing that I would ever miss. And same for Alex, he misses the friends, he misses, you know, uh, his cousins, family members that he can't see very often, but he also loves it here. Yeah. So when we talk about leaving here, part of him's like, well, for how long? Because when will I see these people again? So wherever you can make friends. Yeah, so every new place is the place to make friends and then the next yes. place is the place to miss those. Things. Yes. And you yes. know, but that's how it is with travel lights. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, I, I traveled a lot before I came here too, mm -hmm. just like Anne and you know, you, I think it's more important to um, appreciate those moments you're in mm -hmm. actively. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you're dismissive of, of any relationships once you leave that area, but it's it's important to really try to at least get some roots in wherever you are in the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we definitely slow travel to create that community, to, to create experiences with people. Yeah. Because of course, if you go too fast, you're gonna maybe look at the touristy spots and not spend as much time with the people, so. Yeah. It's why we travel slowly. We stay a while. That's what I plan yeah. to do as well. You mentioned Alex um, missing people and that was sort of a, a struggle there. Um, is he coping fairly well with this move? I, I think he copes. For, so long as the new place we go to has friends, he mm -hmm. copes really well. Okay. So when we first got here, there was a slight moment of struggle. It, but really, we started making friends within a week. Um, we started connecting with the homeschool groups and other people, so pretty quickly he became okay with it. And of course, we had a pool, our first Airbnb, which yeah. also helps a lot. Yeah. So, and <laughs> even though we don't have a pool now, because he's got friends, it balances out to where he's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, with Avery, um, it seems we've moved a few places since we've been in Merida, mm -hmm. so there's been a lot of instability. Um, I am dealing with it relatively well, but um, Avery is still sort of struggling with the, you know, we've, we've sort of been in the last place for um, about three years. And I, I think just with the COVID shutdown, he was in school. And then after that, we were moving and we're here and we're there. All these different transitions are, um, have an effect. So that's something to be mindful of is, you know, if your kid's freaking out, which mine was, <laughs> and then take a, take a take minute slow, to, yeah. 
to fully appreciate that this is a new experience for them. Mm -hmm. Everything is completely new and they've sort of been uprooted. Yeah. Um, and if you if they didn't really have a say so in that, then they're probably going to struggle with that a bit more. So just, you know, try to exercise patience if it is what you plan on doing. One of the things I did with Alex to help him adjust was, you know, back in the US, he ate whatever I made or whatever we got. Like there was no arguing with me. Yeah here because the food is so different the language is so different he's dealing with so much change one of the first things i did was become very lenient with what i allowed him to eat so if we went out to a restaurant and he just wanted to eat a hamburger i would let him because i it was more important that he started to enjoy his experience here i didn't want everything to be uh, a struggle or something he was fighting with so right, something yeah forced on him too and, and then now that we've been here a year i've started to be like okay for real we need to start eating the veggies, trying different foods, because it's not, everything's not new anymore, right? right so he's yeah. got, he's able, I think, to expand a little more now. But yeah, I was much more lenient when we first moved here. That's good. So the, there's different ways to offer some give and take to your, your yes. kids, especially if they're struggling. If there was any way that you prepped Alex and, and prepared to let him, get him ready for the move, um, how, how did you do that? Um, so of course, letting him know my reasons for coming here. I let him know that we were coming here. I let him know, uh, we, we did a little bit of language learning just so we understood how to say hello and goodbye, where, where's the bathroom, things that I knew Alex would care about. But I, we watched videos together so that he knew there were one, there were, there were English speaking people here so that it wasn't gonna be maybe a constant struggle. He knew that there were expat, expats with kids here that he could possibly meet and he's all about the friends. So I made sure that was outlined. He knew about the pool we had at our first Airbnb. So I highlighted um, as many of the positives that I could, but I also warned him a little bit about the negatives. I didn't know how easy, you know, the language uh, issue was going to be it's much easier than I expected but I, I assumed that we would have to um, struggle more with the language mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be hot and so that was something I tried to warn him about as best I could so yeah for the most part all, the same things that you as the parent probably care about your kid cares except with a slight twist where they care more about the fun right like what fun things are there to do at that location um, and just letting them know that there will be opportunity and then of course staying true to it once you get here if you said we're gonna have a pool do your best to go to the pool so that they start to trust um, the location as being fun that's good too also i i think there was a lot of uncertainty on avery's part like mm -hmm. mom what are we doing yeah. <laughs> and, and i didn't always have the answer to that so i you know if you can stay consistent to what you say to your kids it really matters because yeah. they are listening. I, yeah, that's actually a really good point. And I know Avery is younger than Alex. Um, Alex, especially as a kid, really cared about um, being prepared for certain things. And he hated when something changed. So I will say we also have to prepare them for the fact that mommy doesn't know. Mommy doesn't know for sure if this restaurant is open. We don't know for sure like what's going on. And so letting them know that part of the adventure is the unknown and that no matter what even if this place that we're planning on going to is closed it's okay there's other options right even if we're late to go to the movie theater don't worry <laughs> we're eventually gonna find it and we'll get there it's gonna be okay <laughs> that was an inside joke yeah <laughs> <laughs> so did alex play any role in the decision to come here did you did you like if he didn't want to come at all um so he definitely did not pick mexico at all and he definitely would have preferred to stay in the u.s um so one of the things same for rv life he didn't necessarily want to do rv life either and so i always prepped it as give me one year right it's something new we didn't know what rv life was going to be like we didn't know what mexico was going to be like and so the the compromise is my explaining to alex your mother is a traveler she has to travel if you hate it that much, we'll discuss it. But I, I, I didn't want the discussion to be Alex being afraid of going or afraid of trying. I wanted him to go, okay, mom, we did this and I still hate it. Or we did this and this is what I don't like. Um, yeah, so there was a promise of compromise. Although I will admit that I was pretty confident. Traveling is awesome. So I was pretty confident if we can find friends, Alex was gonna be fine, so. But I did, yeah. If he did absolutely hate Mexico or absolutely hate RV life, we would have stopped. I just didn't want his assumptions to stop us. I didn't want it to be, I think I'm going to hate it. That's not going to stop me. 
Yeah, we, we dealt with the same with Avery. He was like, I'm gonna have to change my name and I'm gonna, I'll never be able to speak English again. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So just to help him understand, you know, I, we pulled up videos on YouTube mm -hmm. and just was, just, I really made it a point to get him involved and in, as much as he could be involved yeah. in the yeah. whole process of coming here and getting accustomed to what, you know. What life was like. Yeah. Once we got here, yeah. <clears throat> And the cool thing is even if you only if you're only here for one month for one year a short time mm -hmm. the things your kid learns right in this short time the, the things my kid is going to learn the things we learn just from trying it for one year carries with us forever 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 and so in the future if if he gets a job right in a weird location he's like oh i've never been there he's going to have this memory of but i've been to weird places before i've been to different places and it all worked out I, I can do this. So yeah, it, it builds his confidence, I think, to, right. to explore the world. Right. And I like to think of it so, as sort of like awakening this sense of adventure. Yes. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, but, but I'm going to be okay. optimistic about yes. it and we're going to freaking do this. Yes. I'm trying not to curse. Am I doing that well? <laughs> okay. So, um, <clears throat> is there anything you packed that you wish you didn't? Or anything you didn't pack that you wish you did? Um, I forgot to bring my bathing suit. I will say buying clothes here, clothing for me has been difficult. Um, yeah, so I, I regretted not bringing my bathing suit, completely forgot, because I intended to go to Cenotes from the very beginning, but whatnot. Of course, I went to Walmart, I bought a bathing suit, it worked out. Um, I brought a hair dryer, which is completely unnecessary here. You, look at my hair, y'all. Why did I bring a hair dryer? <laughs> Habit. Flat iron. Habit. Don't y'all don't like, need none of that. It's humid. Yeah. It's very yeah. humid. So you're gonna get moisture in your hair. You Last question. Okay. Is there any advice you have for single parents who travel who want to travel but don't know how that could be possible? Watch YouTube videos. Mm, that's helpful. Wherever you think you want to go, watch YouTube videos. And I'll say most YouTubers, especially in the travel community. Maybe not the ones with millions of followers, I don't know, but for sure the average, I would say YouTuber, we love answering questions, right? So literally comment below, whatever fears you have, questions you have, and it's something that we're happy, and I'm sure you're happy, right? To, yeah. to answer those comments or questions, and um, yeah. So YouTube, I still, like when somebody asks me a question, whether it's about Merida or anything, I have a high chance that I'm gonna give you a link to a YouTube video that I saw somewhere, because I, that's definitely a, a huge reference. The beauty of YouTube, as opposed to let's say a blog, is you can see what they're talking about. Hopefully, um, so yeah, I Not find my other YouTube. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go to the sushi place that you went to in oh. one of your early videos because I was like, "Ooh, I didn't know that place was open." Yeah. So yes, you can learn from all the YouTubers. I follow anyone that's Merida because I want to know what's open, especially with COVID. Like, what is open now? Let me get out there, and I wouldn't know if I didn't watch other YouTubers. This is true. To prepare for our trip, um, like I said, we, me and Avery hit YouTube up um, and really just for the opportunity to get him more familiar with uh, what we would be experiencing in the move, in the process of the move, what it would be like on the airplane, going through customs. Maybe just hold it for the last. <laughs> yeah, so basically to get to get Avery prepared, we just go ahead and get as much information as we can. And he's, I'm a visual learner, he's a visual learner. So all of our prep work was, most of our prep work was done on YouTube. So, for YouTube. amen. So again, if you have any questions, do feel free, free to put them down in the comment section. Um, also, please check out Anne's channel. Could you say your channel again? Priority Focus Life. Priority Focus Life. And um, there are a ton of other different resources you can check out, um, especially other YouTube bloggers. We got our friend over here in the corner. Um, we're not going to put her on camera, but her <laughs> channel is Unconventional Itinerary. Unconventional Itinerary. So go ahead and check her out, too. She's got some cool stuff going on. So, yeah, that's the end of our interview for today. Um, thank you, Anne, for thank joining us. Thank you for us. inviting me, yes. And fun. we'll... <laughs> we'll keep, keep posted, keep subscribing, keep liking, keep sharing, and we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> we'll probably have some bloopers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reason number 10,000 to come to Mary. <laughs>
he's playing right now. Um, so y'all will probably hear him running back here. I mean, hopefully y'all can hear us though more. Pretty sure, pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Still got good information, stay tuned. If, if your number one reason to come to, oh, this is planned as like, oh, Why are you being a hater? <laughs> That's how I did a lot of my research before coming here. Oh gosh. The wind. Having technical difficulties. Unconventional travels. Itinerary. Unconventional itinerary. And un, un, well, what is it? We step by step as far as. Oh God. What was that? Your tablet? It's okay. It's in a projected case. Yes. Okay, wonderful. I'll tell you where you can replace the screen if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> We're having technical difficulties. Oh, uh, what was I saying? To get everything oh. prepared. To view. <laughs> and I like having the kids running in the background. Avery's out here living his best life. That's that's mine. That's, my there, guy. You go. Yeah. there you go. There you go. Do it for the kids. <laughs> you want to tell everybody hi? Hi guys. Hey, you want to tell them what you're doing today? What we're d what I'm doing is I'm playing. Is I'm making new friends, playing at a park. Uh, I don't know what it name what its name was, but I just want to call it Papenza, which is my which Papenza is my favorite park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's finish up. Salty face. Uh, so wait, he, I found this from the table that you were at. Nice. Okay. Um, can you put that back? That looks like it's important and sharp. So put it back, please. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm not putting this back. We're making a video, and you're being disruptive and rude. Can you go put that back, please? Thank you. He's so cute. I, I don't want them to hear me because I don't need them to argue with me. Yeah, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Give them some leeway. Good morning, everybody. I am having a little breakfast before we get ready for our trip. Today, we are actually going to Cenote. We're doing a little group trip thing with the amazing ladies I met. I'm just going to scan around really quick. Our bus is out here waiting for us. I don't think y'all can see it though. But we're about to go on an adventure and y'all are coming too. Thank you. 